Yes, welcome everyone. It is Cannabis News. I'm your host, Joe Clare. It's October 4th, 2019. It is episode 500. Yes, 500. It's, this is now the point where you pretend that I have sound effects and there's applause and there's fireworks and there's people screaming and it's amazing. It's like a Beatles concert, if you remember that really, really old reference. But you have to use your imagination for all that because I don't have sound effects. In any case, it is episode 500. It doesn't make it any less of a celebration for the lack of sound effects. Maybe it does for you. Not for me. Thanks to everybody who uh, has got us to this point. The show continues to grow. 500 episodes is an incredible thing. 100 weeks of broadcast. We will celebrate our second anniversary in about a month. And it's it's just it's, it's incredible. The support, the sharing, uh, the spreading the, the word about this show which is just, and all of it's built organically. There's not any advertisements or anything like that. It's just people sharing and, and other people subscribing. And um, we, we had like 600 subscribers, I think, when I started this show on the YouTube channel on the Marijuana Times. Now we have almost 2,500 subscribers. So keep sharing those videos and all that. And thank you for 500 episodes. Today, we're talking about why I don't care what you think about marijuana legalization. Also history of medical marijuana in France and recreational marijuana legalization petition is off to a hot start in signature gathering in Florida. Before we get to all that, of course, our brand, our sponsor, <clears throat> great sponsor through 500 episodes, nature side, nature side.com and their organic, all natural pesticides grow safe and poison free. You know, the drill. Don't put harmful pesticides and harmful chemicals on cannabis or anything else that someone's going to be ingesting. That's awful. Don't use banned pesticides in the state that you're growing in. Be regulatory compliant. Do all of these things with Nature Side. Nature Side. dot com. A proud sponsor of Cannabis News. Thank you for being there through 500 episodes. Here's to 500 more. Nature Side. This first story by yours truly at marijuanatimes.org. I don't care what you think about marijuana legalization. That's right, you heard me. If you're a regular listener of the show, a regular viewer, it's uh, you know what I mean. It's a regular refrain, regular theme that I touch on. I'm not unaware of the political realities of the time and the necessity of political support among the citizenry when it comes to marijuana legalization because marijuana is prohibited and that is the way, the only way available to us to reverse that prohibition. As I always say, it shouldn't matter what someone thinks about marijuana legalization. For instance, uh, someone named Paul Muschik, he's in Pennsylvania. He wrote an op-ed in Pennsylvania in uh, McCall.com talking about why Pennsylvania shouldn't rush into legalizing adult use marijuana. It's kind of picked up a m momentum. It's picked up momentum <laughs> for the last couple of weeks, uh, especially since the governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Wolf, came out in favor of recreational legalization. He wrote an op-ed talking about the reasons he doesn't think they need to be rushing into, you know, quote-unquote, marijuana legalization and adult use legalization in Pennsylvania. And this is my favorite sentence because this encapsulates the whole problem. He writes, quote, I haven't made up my mind about legalizing recreational marijuana. See, we live in a time where it's perfectly normal for someone to think they need to make up their mind about what complete strangers do in their own homes, something that does not infringe on their rights. We've gotten to the point where everyone feels and, and, and believes, for good reason, because that's the way we've set things up, that they have to have a say in what complete strangers are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Paul really thinks it's important that he sit down and decide whether or not he's for recreational marijuana legalization, whether or not strangers are allowed to buy marijuana, take it home, and smoke it in their own homes without being considered criminals. He's going to have to ponder that so that we may soon have his answer. His, uh, one of his, his main focuses of the article is his fears of what will happen after someone uses marijuana. He says, I believe people should be free to do what they want with their bodies, though, and that includes lighting up, but only if their actions don't endanger others, and only if taxpayers such as me aren't asked to clean up any mess that results. 
That means people who might become full-time stoners shouldn't be able to get state-funded addiction treatment. A couple things wrong with the what's going to happen after someone does something problem. It's a standard, first of all, that can be applied to anything. The the uh, example I use in the article and the example I use a lot is fast food. Someone decides to eat fast food 15 or 20 times a, a month. They eat uh, 20 Big Macs a month. They... Uh, they, they just eat the, the most horrific stuff. And then when they get to a certain age, their body starts breaking down. They're going to the emergency room a lot. Taxpayers foot the bill for a lot of that. And to so what's, what's the answer to that? Well, we could uh, ban all unhealthy foods. We have to get together, decide what, all, what foods are unhealthy, what foods should, people shouldn't be eating, and what foods, if they do eat, they'll be criminalized for, you know, We'll, we'll get together and we'll decide collectively what complete strangers are allowed to eat in their own homes. Or if you've got a problem with the government forcing you to uh, pay for people's mistakes down the road, take it up with the government. As I said, that can be used for anything. Anything. I can make the case that people being allowed to drive infringes on my rights down the road. I may have to pay for that down the road. There's so many cars on the road. People are getting the wrecks. Uh, you know, the, the, the money's going to be made up somewhere. Taxpayers are going to have to foot the bill for a lot of that. Maybe people shouldn't drive. Maybe we should get together collectively and decide that people shouldn't drive. You know, infringing on someone's rights is an immediate thing. If I punch you in the face, I've infringed on your rights. You have to wonder, well, I wonder what's going to happen now down the road because of this. No, I punched you in the face. That's it. If I smoke a joint and then punch you in the face, I've infringed on your rights, but not because I smoked a joint, but because I punched you in the face. It's an immediate infringement. Because once you say, well, this action can lead to this action down the road, this can infringe on my rights, or I have to foot the bill for this, then that can be that can be used for anything. It can be used to justify a ban or a prohibition on anything. As I said, from opioid painkillers to cheeseburgers and everything in between. So his solution, of course, is uh, more research. We need to be more research, do more research. And he needs to be convinced that the level of research is enough to justify him being for adult use marijuana. As I point out in the, in the article, the, the we need to study the issue more crowd, a lot of that is just an excuse to delay legalization because how much research is enough? And what research do we believe? What if two studies are, you know, contradictory um what if this study had uh the number of people participating that we think should be participating and this study doesn't have enough people according to our standards who decides enough it's enough research who decides that it's good enough research and that the quantity and the quality is all good enough to make marijuana legal well everybody has to decide that on their own every stranger has to decide that on their own whether or not the research is enough for other strangers to do something that doesn't infringe on their rights it's a silly sickening circle and cycle. Yes, I'm aware of how that sounds. It's fine. I'm going to pretend I did it on purpose. It's very alliterative and poetic. And I meant to do that. <laughs> but it's just this... We set up, we've set up a system where everyone decides how they feel about what total strangers are doing when the actions don't affect them. And it's commonplace. It's, it's, it's second nature to us. It's second nature to us. We hear someone's doing something in their house. Well, we decide to ourselves, should they be allowed to do that? I mean, they're not infringing on our rights, whatever they're doing, but should they be allowed anyway? Should enough of us decide that we don't like what they're doing and we're going to criminalize it? I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the best way to do it, really. It's the best way we all get together and decide if someone in their own home is doing what we think they should be doing. And furthermore, if it's not what we think they should be doing, we'll make it against the law. I don't know. I think there's, there's got to be something better. <laughs> call, call me crazy. That doesn't seem like a very good system at all. And we see the result. Canvas prohibition. This next story from QZ.com. France's forgotten golden age of medical marijuana. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Obviously, it's a very long article. You can check it out. It's linked in the description of this video, as are all stories that I talk about. Uh, there are some interesting 
parts of it that we'll check out. This past summer, the article can, um, begins the French Food and Drug Office, the Agency Nationale de Securité de Medicament. Medicament? I don't know. I'm very bad at French, uh, French as I am. I spit every other <laughs> language in the world. Greenlit limited medical cannabis trials inside France, something that's been illegal since 1953. But uh, the person who wrote this article did some research. And they found out in the middle of the 19th century, Paris functioned as the epicenter of an international movement to medicalize hashish, an intoxicant made from the pressed resin of cannabis plants. Many pharmacists and physicians when working in France believed hashish was a dangerous and exotic intoxicant from the Orient, the Arabo Muslim world, that could be tamed by pharmaceutical science and rendered safe and useful against the era's most frightening diseases. Starting in the late 1830s, they prepared and sold hashish-infused edibles, lozenges, and later tinctures, hashish-infused alcohol, and even medicinal cigarettes for asthma and pharmacies across the country. Throughout the 1840s and 1850s, dozens of French pharmacists staked their careers on hashish, publishing dissertations, monographs, and peer-reviewed articles on its medicinal and scientific benefits. Uh, French epidemiologist Louis Remy Aber Rocher published a treatise, um, treatise in 1840, in which he argued hashish administered a small, a small edible called dawamask, taken with coffee, successfully cured plague in seven of 11 patients he treated in the hospitals of Alexandria and Cairo during the epidemic of 1834 and 1835. As an anti-contagionist in the pre-germ theory era, Abar Roche, as most physicians then believed the plague was um, the plague and a transmittable disease of the central nervous system spread to humans via miasma, or bad air, in unhygienic and poorly ventilated areas. Uh, and they believe that cannabis was a way to clear, you know, uh, clear the, 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 thing, the bad humors that caused the plague. <laughs> Obviously, it's a little primitive in terms of medical science, but cannabis has been used for thousands of years for medicine, as it is today. And I imagine a lot of people don't know, especially in France, the history of medical marijuana in France. Uh, So they can check that out. As I said, it's linked in the description of this video. It's also on QZ.com. And um, as France makes their tentative first steps toward re-legalizing medical marijuana, this last story is from CBS12.com. In Florida, recreational marijuana petition already has 100,000 signatures. We talked about this petition uh, the other day is the Make It Legal Florida petition backed by uh, Sotera and MedMen. A lot of money behind it, so much money uh, that the group is mailing out flyers to make the process as easy as possible for voters with their names and addresses already filled out on the petition. They don't even need to buy a return stamp, just sign it and send it back. So in this way, the new petition to legalize recreational marijuana has gathered 100,000 signatures in its first 20 days of the campaign. This is the one we talked about the other day, as I said, that does not include home growing. Uh, people behind Make Illegal Florida say that they don't think home growing can pass the 60% threshold. Most people think it's just because Med Men and Sotero want to uh, eliminate as much competition as possible before legalization comes to Florida. According to state law, the petition must undergo a Florida Supreme Court review before it can even be considered, and that can be done. Only after 76,632 signatures have been collected, if the 100,000 signatures can be verified, that will be more than enough to complete the process then uh, to make the ballot. By February, they'll need over 766,000 valid signatures. So uh, the most controversial, at least among activists, of the attempts at adult-use marijuana so far in Florida, adult-use marijuana legalization. Uh, the better funded one is the one without the home growing and the one that seems like it's um, probably going to get to the ballot with more ease than the other ones. All the regulate Florida has uh, has passed through their Supreme Court threshold and are now collecting signatures toward the bigger number. And uh, that does include home growing. So if you're in Florida, do a little research, check out the various ballot proposals, you know, get behind and support one that you think is is the best one to get behind because as I said in the beginning of the show, coming back full circle, even though you're what you think about marijuana legalization shouldn't matter. It does 
because of the political realities and what needs to be done to reverse prohibition. And that is a shame, but it is the world we live in and the only avenue open to us. That's what we cover here on Cannabis News. 500 episodes. We cover the cannabis community, industry, and beyond. Five days a week for the Marijuana Times. Check out the Marijuana Times on YouTube and Vimeo. If you want the audio version of the show, of course, Apple Podcasts. Thank you to Nature Side again for 500 episodes. Here's to 500 more. Nature-Side.com and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Thank you to the viewers, the fans, the listeners, the people who share, like, and comment and spread the truth about cannabis with this show. We continue to grow because of you, and we hope you continue to watch and do all the things you have been doing to spread the truth about cannabis with this show. Thanks for watching and listening today. It's the weekend. Go enjoy. We'll see you next week right here on Cannabis News. (laughs) 